when it comes to like stuff like Inferno, where it's just a lot of playing and blazing like that, it's pretty much mm -hmm. a lot of uh, alterations on things that are kind of normal and just done in a way that I can do. Okay. And is that was that the writing process for like the dual guitar insanity of uh, the Cacophony era? Or it was more work? prevalent in Cacophony than it is now because in Cacophony we weren't as as uh, as good at songwriting for one thing and we weren't as concerned with songwriting as like maybe I am now. I mean, mm -hmm. you can do a couple albums like that where it's just like going crazy right. on guitar all the time. Um, but at some point you're going to have to make music. And some of that is really good. It's very musical and well, I, th I thought there, were, there was just such a density of good ideas in there. Maybe they weren't all fleshed. Maybe every one of those could have been a tune. That's a good you idea. Know? That's I mean, that's a good word. I mean, density. I mean, we had so much that we wanted to like prove because there was this big guitar scene going on, and we didn't really like it. Because, <laughs> oh, so this was your answer to it? Yes, it was our answer to it. I mean, there was a lot of super players, and we yeah. loved their abilities. But I think we, like I just said, we want, kind of wanted to yeah. fuck that stuff and kind of do it maybe a little bit more dissonant mm -hmm. and with a couple different influences, like from obscure classical music. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's this whole sort of very casual and spur of the moment approach that you have is very interesting considering I think a lot of people think of cacophony, for example, as it must have been a very studied thing. But your whole approach to this is total rock rock and roll kind of approach to or jazz approach to improvisation and capturing moments yeah but like, i mean uh, some of these things we're talking about picking wise for example like yeah. where did you to take a very specific example this uh if you take like a c major shape arpeggio then that's right you would do that um where you start with the pinky that inversion where it's the root is the pinky uh, c major like uh, i'm i'm sorry I, i'm i just mean the shape of c you know how if you were to a shape of a c chord yeah so when you you put, put that up the neck you got to put a pinky on the Top. Exactly. So that, like, were people doing, where did you pick up the sweep element? I'm not that? a sweeper at all. But okay. that, when you go all the way. how like perverted it is compared to the guys who will come and play a perfect right, sweep right. like that um but it no doesn't. one was talking about that kind of approach when you were learning basic skills like sweeping wasn't a thing right no and i never you know i'm a there's probably 10 guys in this building who can sweep way better than me uh -huh. um none of those techniques with names on it yeah. kind of came into my radar well, i mean jason was is sort of a poster child for for a lot of people he's the the god of that of a certain kind of he's that. a god of that but like also with Jason, it really wasn't about the technique, it was about content. Mm -hmm. um, Jason was one of those fantastic guys who um, techniques, I'm sure he worked very hard on it, but like he could master any technique anytime. Mm -hmm. But once you do that, now what do I do? Now you've got to make music. So he, you know, he had all of these fantastic techniques at his command and the, whatever they call them, I don't know what they hybrid picking and all this stuff he he could do all those things i could pretty much interpret my own music my own way with mm -hmm. my own weird set of abilities right. but he had that plus all of the standard techniques mm -hmm. so he had a really big palette of stuff right. and you know i was around at the time where he came from like just having that technique to cr actually creating music with it mm -hmm. and um that's when you really start to grow